What's good peeps and welcome to my channel. Today, we're gonna to be making these paintings from start to finish. We're gonna be creating these canvases, priming, and then creating the actual paintings themselves. Now, if you wanted to see how I completed these paintings, stay tuned to find out. And now I'm gonna start by cutting the frames for my canvases. So I know that I want these to be 30 by 30, but what I'm gonna do is cut six boards to 30 inches wide and six boards to 29 inches wide because I'm gonna butt joint them so that it creates a perfect square. And to make my life a lot easier, I'm just gonna cut one of the frames and then use that as a template for my other ones so I don't have to keep measuring and recutting as I go. Now I'll do that exact same step for my corner cross beams here. These are just gonna add in some structural stability so that that canvas won't move around on me. And I'll use that exact same step that I had done before where I just cut one of my braces and use that as a template for the other ones. Now I'll need 12 of these because I have four for painting and three paintings. And now that I've got all of my pieces cut, it's time to assemble all of these together. I used these corner clips to make a perfect 90 degree angle, and I could have gone in and cut 45 degree angles for all of these, but I chose the butt joint because this will give us some structural stability when we go to shoot our two and a half inch nails into this and make just a really nice base for our canvas to be stretched over. And now I'm gonna switch from my two and a half inch nailer to my one inch nailer so that we can start by putting these corner braces in and add some more structural stability. This was actually a remnant piece that I'm using from my previous painting that we did with the face and the two owls. So this will actually give a little bit of space from where the crossbars are so that there isn't an overhang when you go to hang it on the wall. And so this will make it look really flat and really perfect in the ending. And now I'm gonna go in and repeat that step 12 different times so that we have all of our corners kind of structurally sound. And then I'm gonna move on to actually stretching our canvas onto the frames that we just cut. So I'll start by laying down my canvas flat on the table, and then I'm gonna tack in one side with my staple gun here so that I can move to the opposite side and pull extremely tight. And so we start to get almost a X or a cross in the center there and then I can just work my way out, continuing to staple those edges in and making sure to pull extremely tight so we have a nice tight canvas to paint onto. And then I'll start by folding in my corners. Basically, it's the same thing as wrapping a Christmas present, but <laughs> I just pull that extremely tight, tack that into place, and I wanna make sure that the fold goes towards the top and the back of the painting so the viewer won't see it from the front. And so now I'll start by cutting the excess off of the back. We definitely don't need it and it would probably make the painting not sit properly on the wall. And so we're just gonna trim that off leaving probably a quarter of an inch from the staples so that nothing tears or rips in the future. And then we're just gonna continue that on all three of our paintings. And now I'm gonna go in and start to prep that surface to make sure there's no kind of scraps or any dust that's left over. We're gonna be gessoing our canvas right now. And so basically this is an extremely thick primer. And so if there were to be any schnittles on the <laughs> surface of the painting, it would kind of cement that in. And we don't want that because we want this to be an extremely flat surface for us to be able to paint onto. So I'll just start by going onto all of my edges here, and then I'll work to the face, completely coating that in our gesso layer. And once I'm finished completely coating that painting, I'll actually start to work that into the surface so we have a really nice bind to the fabric. And then I'll just start by continuing that onto my two other canvases. And the nice part about this gesso is if I do have any kind of ripples or anything on the sides, that gesso will actually shrink and start to make everything a lot more tight. And so that'll completely get rid of any ripples or imperfections that we have. And when this is all completed, we're gonna wait for it to dry overnight so we can come in and paint over our newly dried primer. The next day. And now I've brought this painting outside because it's so big that I wasn't gonna be able to get it on my camera. This is about seven feet wide, so I needed to put my tripod on a ladder. And so basically here I'm just starting off by doing my background and I wanted this to be more abstract and kind of fluid so that it goes with the motion of the feather. And so basically I'm just painting in my background here. And then I'm gonna go in and start to paint some little accents with a metallic silver paint. And so this is really gonna shimmer and kind of give more visual interest when you're going past the painting because it'll actually reflect light back at you. 
And now I'm painting my metallic accents in a dot form. And so I'll be putting these in where the feather is going to go following the contour. And so this will give me a kind of template of where those feathers are going to go in the end. And now I'll start off by sketching out my feather. So basically this is just an outline and it will be covered. So it doesn't need to be anything perfect. But while I'm doing this, I want to remember, I want this to be whimsical and kind of follow the contour of those dots that I had just did earlier. And so I'm going to start on this left side here, filling in my detail and making sure that I'm blending those colors out. I didn't want this just to be one flat color. So basically I'm just outlining and then blending as I go. And I'll be adding in some highlights and lowlights in the end. So so that it'll really start to give that that three-dimensional feel. And now that I'm all done with that feather painting, I'm going to start by painting my birds. And so I really wanted these to start small and kind of transition to get bigger and then draw your eye upwards to the largest bird that's in the top right there so that this whole painting will actually have more of a diagonal feel and it'll really draw your eye through. And so as I'm painting these birds, I'm just kind of outlining them in my navy color. And then when I'm done with all of them and I'm happy with how it's turned out, I'll go in and add my details to make them look more realistic and match the other side of the painting. And here's more of a detail shot of me filling in the details on these birds. So basically I'm just going in with my white and grays to add in a little bit more of that dimension in them and start to add in the details so that this will actually start to match up and look more realistic with that feather painting that we had just created. And as I'm painting these, I wanna make sure that I'm making each bird unique. I really want it to be more visually interesting so your eye doesn't get stuck on each bird and just become repetitive. I really wanted it to have more of their own characteristics and so it'll really start to draw your eye through that piece. And now here with the larger birds, it's actually a lot easier because I don't have to use the world's smallest paintbrush. <laughs> but basically I'm just gonna go in and like my other birds, fill in the details here. And I really want these to be pretty accurate because these are gonna be the biggest ones. These are gonna be the birds that your eyes are kind of drawn to. And so I really wanna add in a lot of detail and make these really stand out. And now we can start adding in our final details, adding in the talons and just the finishing touches. And then we can call this project complete. Thank you guys so much for watching and making it to the end of this video. Now, if you could please like, share, or subscribe, whichever one, all three, up to you. <laughs> I've got some videos that don't actually pertain to birds coming up here. And if you guys wanted to see some projects that are coming down the pipe, go and follow the Instagram. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.